Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Guest Thursday, and uh, we have a very special guest, uh, Heath and Rebecca Cardi, uh, from uh, multiple locations <laughs> <laughs> around the world, uh, and it's good to have them. They they were guests before to share their story, so we're going to get an, an an update from you guys. So, welcome, uh, Heath and Rebecca. And, uh, That's it's great, great to see you great guys. Great to have again. you. Where where are you located uh, this week? We are in Arvada, Colorado. So huh. we live here. We're probably in town about half the time. Yeah. And, uh, so good to be home. Kids here, small group, everything is perfect. So yeah, share a little bit about um, you know the fact that you you do have a you know different uh, locations and tell us a little, again about your family. So just kind of bring everybody up to date so they we remind everybody kind of a little bit of your uh, background. Sure. We, um, so we currently, we live in Arvada, Colorado, but we also uh, live in about Iceland, um, Iceland about one third of the year. I guess we'll talk about some, how we, how we got there and what that looks like and what, what God's been doing and leading out there. Um, on the personal side, we've got, we've got four kids. Two are married and um, I, actually, I think Colton and Alicia were on the show just uh, yeah. Yeah, they were they, they were, were just a joy to have on yeah, too. They were, they were, they were so fun awesome, to watch their faith. Rich, you've just been an awesome um, uh, coach and, and just helping them through abiding and listening and processing. Um, second son and daughter live here in Denver. Um, they're doing well. She um, she works for Riverside Baptist Church here and, and he works downtown Denver in finance. Uh, third son's actually getting married here uh, August 7th so we're excited about that I'm not sure so it's exciting will be about that time so very excited to have third one married and fourth one's also doing well so younger younger two are at uh, Liberty University they've been there for a few years and um, no one's here in the house which is actually part of the story too so <laughs> where's been, your uh, go ahead Rebecca uh, yeah this has been a really fun season for me because uh, growing up we just had boys and they were all boy and everything, <laughs> everything boy. And um, now it's been a season of girls, bringing girls mm. to the family. So really enjoyed that. Um, doing nails and buying dresses. Monday we're going dress shopping. That's so awesome. That's just, what uh, we call our bonus kids. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so we, we had our three original, Joshua, Kayla, Banana, and now we're getting bonus children. Jeez. You know? <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah. Where's uh, where's your wedding uh, gonna take place? Up in Evergreen. It's in a barn. It's called ah. the Barn at Evergreen Memorial Park. Yeah. Oh yeah, neat. Oh, that'll be fun. And uh, are they uh, are they gonna go off on a honeymoon at all? Or? They are. They're going to Kauai. Ah. Oh, yeah, that which sounds is nice. Actually, that's another story um, that was just such a gift from God because we're doing this thing. Um, it's a house exchange that mm -hmm. we're. Of, and it's called third home and so you can put your property in there if it's not your main house mm -hmm. and you can exchange with other people and we had gone to this place in Kauai a couple years ago um, and loved it and we told the woman if it's ever available again we would love to do an exchange with you and she could come to the our place up in the mountains and um, we didn't hear anything didn't hear anything and then she texted and said, the place is open August 8th, which is the day after the wedding. Oh, that's <laughs> so perfect. Like, no, but then, oh, it probably would be nice to offer this. It's probably a gift. <laughs> it's open for a week, the day after the wedding. So yeah. it's been for a there. And, and the kids didn't invite you to join them for that? <laughs> I know, all the brothers said I yeah. The brothers want to crash the party. <laughs> They're super excited to go there. Wow, that's fun. So are they are they coming to use your place in in uh, mountains? Uh, the family from Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. Yeah. I don't know. Are they using in, it uh, during the ski season? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
during the ski season. So oh, and it, that's so the fun. Exact same week. They can actually do a different week. So wow, that's yeah, that's great. Oh, beautiful. Um, well, as you uh, you know, as you've been walking with God and, and particularly learning what it means to discern God's will, um, we we just did a leader retreat uh, where we were together. We were all together in Tuscany, and uh, Heath and uh, Rebecca shared uh, a story about about their house that we were we were actually um, right in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And we prayed about it and, and asked God about it uh, together with you. And then you understood a few things. And then it's been a change since. So why don't you walk us through, you know, the whole thing from the very beginning of how you even came to be thinking about, you know, selling the, this uh, property uh, and then what was happening and then ultimately what, what has happened. So just kind of walk us through that story of how you discerned, you know, and process God's will. I could probably finish the rest of the podcast with this. Story. <laughs> it's so long and God has done so much through this, mm. um, through this property. Um, it started back in 2006 when our kids were small and we bought properties just to flip. Um, that was our thought. And that was right before the market crashed. And we ended up with three properties um, in this building that we um went to our church and we told them that we have these properties there. We, we weren't really sure what to do with them. We knew the church had missionaries. We asked if there was, if they ever had missionaries and they wanted a place to stay, that they were welcome to stay there while we figured out what we were going to do with this, these properties that we were underwater on. And so there was a family from the Philippines that was coming for three months and they said they would love to stay there. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got to know them. They came over to our house. Um, we spent time with them. They invited us to the Philippines and we ended up going. And that's how we became just lovers of all things missions. Um, that was really our introduction into missions. And that's um, was just really our first taste of missions and what missionaries did. And they became our heroes. And um, so that's kind of how we got started in this. Um, and then we en- ended up adding two more um, in that building. So we had five properties in that building. Mm. And we always kind of thought that we would retire there. We just thought one day we'll sell our house when the kids are gone and we'll just move into one of those. And that was our plan. Um, and when we started learning how to abide and walk with God and hear his voice um, in 2020, um, one of the first things that God spoke to me personally was, um, well, to both of us, but. But they was, were really um, good properties though, too. I mean, I wasn't involved with them. Right, right. That was your business. So. Right. Yeah. Thankfully. I mean, it allowed me to um, stay home with the kids and it was very flexible, something I could do with them while they mm. were growing up. It was really, it was a blessing um, in so many ways. And we used it for our missionary housing um, throughout the years, but it also was corporate housing was mainly what mm. it was. We used it for uh, missionaries when they were in town. And so uh, 2020. in 2020, when we learned to, we're learning to abide and hear God's voice, um, God had spoken to us about loosening dock lines and starting to untether here because he had something planned for us. And we weren't really sure what it was. We had some guesses, but um, the first thing he spoke to me was to um, sell a loft. And so um, God said, I'm going to take you on a field trip. And I was a little worried about that at first. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He just brought buyer after buyer in just miraculous ways for each one, just Boom, boom, boom. Like they just first two or three weren't even on the market. Yeah, they people were the elevator, people but. would just come into the building and say, um, you know, I want to see this place. And it wasn't even for sale. And mm. um it, it was just incredible how God just and we sold them furnished. We just basically mm. just gave them the keys and walked out the door. We didn't have to do anything. Mm. It was amazing. That's amazing. Um, so then we were down to this last one. Um, and we it was another miraculous story. We sold our house. Um and we ended up moving into um, the last one. And Which we probably shouldn't have. <laughs> That's another story. Right. <laughs> we, okay. So, and, and then we had another condo built at that, during that time. And so now we're in the process of selling the final, the final unit there. Um, and 
yeah, when we were in Italy, we we had been under contract, I think probably three times at that point, and they just kept falling through. Mm. Um, and just learning to process. Um, during that time, we understood the process of processing. Really appreciate a lot. Perfect. And uh, yeah, and it's just so much simpler than we were making it. And mm. um, so we are under contract again, and we're set to close on the day of the wedding. Wow. So, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and as, as it, um, as it was falling through, I know, and, you know, and it doesn't happen, uh, you know, share a little bit of, you know, what your what you, what everybody typically does is think about, you know, even the, the, the command of, you know, uh, I'd like you to, you know, cut the lines. Well, yeah, but this one's not being cut. And so, you know, to walk us through a little bit of, of how you, you were trying to understand that and were wondering about it. Um, and then ultimately, you know, what, what did God confirm for you? I'm actually going to back up to, because I think this goes with some other things. So we actually think that we missed God's, uh, we, we didn't follow God's direction um, earlier on this property, which is why I think we even still have it. And of course, mm -hmm. God's gracious since now forward. But when we when we sold our property in, uh, when we sold our, our family home back in December of 21, uh, we we were, we continued to operate under the instruction of loose and knock lines. And we felt like we were supposed to sell this, we were supposed to sell our condos. But because we were moving out of our property, we had something else being built. We still needed a place to live for what we thought was six months, but actually turned out to be a year and a half almost <laughs> uh, because of construction delays. But we, so we were selling our house and our, our desire of our heart and something that we had talked about and shared was to go live in just temporarily since we, we knew we had this in one time. We just wanted to have fun with it. And it was just the two of us. And we thought it would be really fun to go live in downtown Golden and mm -hmm. just live downtown mm -hmm. Golden, get some furnished corporate housing. Um, I, I work down there. We love Golden, Colorado. It's a great little town. So we thought, you know what? Just for a season, it'd be fun just two of us to go live down there. And what we did was we promptly, logically talked ourselves out of it. Um, and and mm -hmm. we, we both had the same desire, but we... So you know what, we really, like, it makes more sense to go live in this corporate housing unit that we have. Yeah, we're supposed to untether, but like, mm. it's, going, it's only gonna be six, eight months. Like, let's just move in, it's more logical, it'll be cheaper. We already have it. There's already furnished, we already have it. Like, it's just, we kind of talked ourselves out of what, yeah. and we didn't mm. ask God. And I think we did, and God had actually told us, he didn't say don't do it, but God had told us, he had told me, like, you won't have peace living there. And I was like, well, okay, I cannot have peace for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny what we yeah. allow ourselves yeah. to settle for, yeah. right? Yeah. He, he even gave me a heads up. He was like, you're not going to have peace. And I was like, yeah, but it makes so much sense. Like, you know, logically. <laughs> uh, so we move in there. It was fine. We didn't have peace. We didn't love living there. Rebecca's sensitive to noise, and there's a lot of noise upstairs. And it just, it, it was annoying and, and it was for a time. And then, you know, our, face, our place was finally built like eight months later than it was supposed to be. We move in and now we're trying to sell this unit in a much more difficult market than if we mm. would have a long time ago. So we are selling at a lower price than I believe we could have gotten if we would have done it back then. And we would have, of course, paid to have corporate housing in, say, downtown Golden. I think we would have enjoyed it. Um, so, you know, not that, you know, I feel like, you know, we're living in sin or something, but I feel like we really, we used our logic to talk ourselves, I think, out of what God had mm -hmm. for us. And, and it's helpful, not like in a condemning way, but just in an instructive now forward. Okay, so what does that look like next time? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, as we were looking back and we were talking about it, we both had so much joy when we thought about when we when God gave us the idea, we could just go live somewhere else for a little while. And we both had joy. And then we just quickly convinced ourselves that it, it didn't make sense. Just monetarily, we didn't feel like it made sense. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then as you were, um, okay, then you finally, okay, now we're going to sell it. And uh, you had people that came but they all fell through um 
you know, then then you I know you started thinking about, well, maybe this one we're supposed to just keep it. Um, walk us through again, because uh, th this is really helpful for everybody that's seeking God's will, because um, as we're as we're understanding something, but then it doesn't happen. Uh, we wonder maybe then I guess based mm -hmm. on it not happening, I guess maybe I should keep it. And or is, did I it, hear wrong? And you know, did it, you <laughs> all know, of these uh, things. So, and I know, and I know everybody goes through that. I know you guys went through that a little bit. Share that a little bit of that when you came to that point of now you're in your new brand new house. You you have this property, but it's not selling. What was your what was some of your struggle as you walked through that about what to do now? I think for me, it's a matter of keeping really good records on mm -hmm. words that God has spoken to me because I have a tendency to overthink things and rethink things. And did that, did he really say that? I want to go back to the beginning. I feel like I start all over in the beginning, but if I'm really good about, I've been trying to have separate journals for different words. I just, it, it's in a remarkable actually, which is an electronic journal. And I have one just called words and it's words that God has spoken to me on mm. where we live now, words that God has spoken to me on Iceland, words that God has spoken about each of our kids. And it's been really helpful for me to just go back and read all of those words and see and just be reminded and just rehearse the things that God has said, because then I don't start to talk myself out of it or rethink things or um, question things. And so that's been super helpful for me. Hmm. So just going back to that and re being reminded that God did tell us to um, loosen our dock lines and to untether mm -hmm. and uh, just to read through those things was really helpful for me and and to know too that god's working both sides of it that he's bringing the right buyer in tuscany so we were processing this with you in tuscany and i think we we had an offer that was quite low from a, from a buyer so i think your instruction which which we did was we we that afternoon we went and rebecca and i each just went apart and we're like hey we're just going to ask god to give us a number yeah and that was, that was really cool. And we both went, but we didn't, you know, try to overthink it or logic or, you know, whatever. And we just went, went apart. It was like the whole day. It was, I think for me, it was literally like three or four minutes and just asking mm -hmm. God, hey, this is what's going on. This is what I know. These are some facts. What should we do? And we both came back. So then, you know, we both got back together later. I'm like, hey, I got a number. She's like, I got a number. So I guess there was a lot of trust. I'm not going to write mine down. You know what you so like, so there's no cheating. And uh, it was the exact same number. Yeah, I love and that. Because of that, and it, it wasn't we had we had discussed anything. We just came back with the exact same number, and um, then we went back to the seller and said, "Hey, this is." And we had told you, so we just felt like, okay, this is the number God gave us. We came back to the, I mean, to the buyer. And we said, "This is the number," and and they said, "You know, no, we're not going to do it." We said, "Okay," but like it was just done and it dropped. Now they they ended up, and this is actually the same one. They, they ended up coming back probably two weeks later and saying, okay, we're back. Mm. And then came with another number. And then, um, and then we went back, to which, which we, we, you know, talked and we, we asked God and God said, no, that's not it. So we said, what should we do? He's like, give them another number. And you know what? It was a different number than the number that we had in Tuscany. Mm. Um, and some other things that happened along the way. And uh, so Rebecca and I went back and we, we got a new number from God and we went back to them with that number. Um, and then they came back and said, yes, that's fine. We'll mm. do that. So now we are, we are under contract with the number that we gave them and it's set to close August 7. And, and if it doesn't, then God's got something else. I mean, just, he has been there every step of the way, but Rebecca and I, I think, and a big part of it was kind of some of the, some of the help of processing and learning how to process these things it, this is not an emotional thing for us, thankfully, but it's it's something that we've been able to do in unity as we've been kind of processing it better and just really asking, seeking, knocking um, together. So we, we have a long way to go, but I feel like we're making progress and the, the processing has been a lot better. And this is a, one example of those things. Yeah, so. yeah. And awesome. uh, again, just to, uh, you know, kind of 
encapsulate a little bit what you've said is that, and this is this is important as we walk with God and learn His will. Is that um, it's step by step by step. Mm -hmm. You know, by the way, how about now? Even when maybe you missed something that I that I had planned before, but you missed it. Yeah, I can still take care of this. Don't worry. I can make all things work together for good. I don't worry. Um, so let's go. Um, and you did. And you got a number. And they've said no. Um, but the cool thing, and, and I can remember this with you guys, was that um, that didn't phase you at all. Um, you didn't even think, well, maybe we should have given them a different number. You, you, you got God's mm -hmm. number. That was it. The answer was clear. Eh, okay, no problem. Um, they come back, and this is what's cool is, and this is what people have a little bit of a problem with, is that what you could have done is said, well, God gave us a number. Mm -hmm. We're just staying on that. Because right. he already said that, so that's it. And just making the assumption that that's still but, where you're at. Yeah. But you didn't, and you said, okay, now what? Here we are now, again, another scenario, same people, but a different scenario. Well, Father, what what's your number now? And he said, well, here's your new number. Um, and it's something to, for all of us to keep remembering that it's always about what he says now. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I hear a lot of people saying, well, God gave me this promise, you know, um, and I've interpreted it to be a certain thing and I'm standing on it. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Why don't you go ask him what, what does he have to say now? Mm -hmm. uh, which you did, which is which is kind of cool. And uh, Rebecca, you said something that I'd like you to uh, share a little bit more about. Is you have a book that says I have words, promises that God's spoken, and you keep a record of those. Um, talk a little bit about that. About what what does that look like, and then what's the value of that? Which you gave a little bit of a of a hint to. What's the value of that as you guys are going back to that? Yeah, that has really helped me a lot. Um, there's been times where I hear something and I think, oh, I know that God has spoken that, but I can't really remember what it was. And then um, I didn't really have a place to keep everything before. And I had it all written down in my journal, but it was so hard to find <laughs> each thing every time I was looking for it. So um, once I got the remarkable, um, a couple of years ago, I really enjoyed having that, um, all of the different categories because it's easy to just have them all in one place. And, and you can search them by words too, right? You well, I actually have documents. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't actually synced that up yet, ah. <laughs> to do that, but I, it's just inside there. I have it in a folder. And it's just been so helpful for me. And as I find them in my Bible now, um, I've been transferring them in there because of, as I write dates and people's names oh, good. or something in my Bible, I've been writing all of those down. And it's just been so helpful um, just to look back at those and see all of the things, like all of the promises that God has given us about Iceland. Um, and I don't even, usually when I, when God speaks, a verse to me, I know it's for Iceland, but I don't know, I don't know what it means. I don't always understand like where, how, how is that going to happen? Um, but as I've kept a record of all of these things, it's been really interesting to look back at these and read through them as things have happened and start to see some of these things um, coming to pass and just some fruit from these things that God has promised. So it's been really helpful. Um, and it's been helpful too, as well for our kids, because I've started to keep one for our kids. And um, just, we both have felt recently like God has really been telling us to rehearse his goodness um, to our children. Oh, that's good. That we need to um, start having these things written down so that we can just share those things with them. So that, that has been helpful to have that all in one spot. Yeah. Yeah. And as you, uh, have received those, um, uh, do you, do you then review them together, process them? Like you say, sometimes you don't even know what they mean yet. 
Um, but you got to, you know, continue on in terms of keep asking, okay, what are you trying to show us? Do you guys, is that something you guys do and share together? Um, how do you process that? Yeah, we do. We have been um, taking time to process those things. Um, we need to do better at it, but we are getting better. I think we've been more, we have been more intentional. We kind of are sometimes more structured and less structured, but we have been um, able to spend dedicated time doing that. And there's just so much more. I mean, I think that's the, the I think that that's the blessing of it. Of course, you know, we're, when when we're together, we're praying. There's, and then when there's unity, I think it just helps bring so much clarity to what God is mm -hmm. saying. So that processing time is important. We we do it, but we need to do more of it. But it is such a blessing. So yeah, yeah. And a, um, you know, just as you are describing it, um, I'd like to highlight. You know, one thing that's kind of cool is that. I mean, think about it. Um, when you write that down, on what basis are you able to write it down? Well, you actually heard it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you heard something. And the cool thing, and this is this is a, the wonderful thing I think about God's will. Um, and usually, I think it happens a lot this way because you know sometimes we're, we are saying, you know, what do you have to say about this specific thing? And a promise comes, but a lot of times it's pay attention. I'm going to say something to you, and you don't even understand it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. but you got to write it down. You heard it. Don't second guess it. And I'll fill it out as you pay attention, process it, you know, look mm -hmm. for uh, meaning, but you heard it. And, and what I would encourage, you know, the audience to do is be thinking, first of all, God is going to speak things. Mm -hmm. um, when you hear it, just write it down. Right. Uh, have it a place. And I love what you're doing, uh, which is really encouraging. I think that you actually have it in a specific place that you can go back to. Because mm -hmm. uh, if we just write it in our journal as it happens, we, you know, and by the way, by the time you get to your second or third journal, you'll probably lose it. So you've, you've given us a way to, oh, don't, don't lose it, you know, keep it there and you can go back to it. So, so that's kind of cool. And we just rejoice with you that, mm -hmm. Um, it's exciting for Kathy and I to hear that you're receiving words and then you get to explore them as time goes on. And we know, um, and, and maybe you could comment on this, is that by itself, why is that exciting to you? Just just that by itself. You don't even know yet, but you get the, the joy of finding out. Why, why is that fun? <clears throat> he's speaking to us and that we get to partner with him in such an exciting adventure yeah it's, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah just hearing his voice is and knowing that he's there and he's leading us mm -hmm. it's very comforting and gives us peace yeah. yeah as i think about that i'm reminded uh, my daughter says this all the time but how grand and how personal god is you know, that, that it's both and, and what you're describing there is that very thing is we, we look at God as who he is and magnify him and see the grandness of God and how big he is, how capable he is yet, even in all that grandness, he looks at us and he's so personal as to speak to us into our particular situation with specificity and directions and words of encouragement and instruction for us to receive. And wow, what a privilege, right? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing. Um, we uh, are going to pick it up again next week. Uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, because of their house in Iceland uh, that they've been involved now in uh, beginning to influence church leadership over there. Um, and it's it's the beginning of a big movement, I think, because of, uh, of Heath and Rebecca. So we're excited to hear about that of, you know, again, how uh, we go back and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about even how you wound up there. And then you just living it out. People are, are interested in that church, church mm -hmm. people, and they're going to take it now and start to really uh, develop further in Iceland. So we're really excited to hear that story. So everybody tune in again next week, and you're going to hear some really cool things about 
just how God works and we get to join him in that work, you know, and, and so yeah. you guys are in that spot. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for Heath and Rebecca, uh, their wonderful story, uh, just even about this house and how beautiful it is. Even now, we just we just pray that it will close as you have it planned and uh, that even on the day of their wedding, uh, that they mm -hmm. get to experience something beautiful. And we thank you and praise you for them in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so Bye, much you for joining us, guys. It's great to see you. And thank you listeners for joining us today. Be sure to tune in next week and continue to hear the story with Heath and Rebecca. And also join us tomorrow for End Times Friday. Look forward to seeing you then. Yep, we'll see you then. See you guys. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.